This is the best-selling vehicle in America, whereas this is the best-selling one in Italy. Very different and very indicative of how vastly dissimilar those two markets are. And car companies know that. They know what to sell and to who. But every now and then, these companies, they just miss the market. Hey guys, type here with a list of cars that I think would sell better elsewhere. But first, a message from my sponsor, Exter. Check this out. I cannot believe that this tiny thing fits everything that I carried in my old George Costanza wallet, but it does. It's got my cards, my documents, cash too. Plus, this little Exter is unlosable. Thanks to this slim solar power tracker that it comes with, I can easily find it anywhere in the world using the app. I can even make it ring. Other cool things include this hair trigger for quick card access, RFID protection, and top of the line premium leather built. I wish you could feel this right now. It's so soft and nice the way it smells. Oh, it's like a old Bentley. Oh, okay. So say goodbye to your thick wallet. Go to shop.exter.com slash topcarstv and use this code to get 25% off your purchase. You don't like it? You can return it. Shop.exter.com slash topcarstv. Don't sniff glue. Sniff your slim wallet instead. <sighs> ah. All right. Since I already mentioned Italy and the Fiat Panda, let's start with that. There are several reasons why these are so popular in the pasta land. Super high fuel prices, super high taxes on big engines, and super narrow city streets. This is more or less true for all European countries, where small and even smaller cars have been the best-selling models for years. And this got me thinking, how about those K cars then? The main characteristic of these Japanese super minis is that they're tightly regulated in terms of body dimension, engine size, and power. They're famously cheap to buy. The small, frugal engines make them cheap to run, too. And as long as they can fit within those tight regulations, they'll fall in the lowest tax bracket, too. But if you think that such tiny cars can't be practical, just wait to see what's inside this boxy little thing. Thanks to the configurable interior, even the biggest fat ass can fit inside. Yeah, let's see your pathetic little smart car do that. So why wouldn't these work in the much larger European market too? Compared to, um, oh, I don't know, the aforementioned Panda, for example, you'd have absolutely nothing to lose. Well, other than some street cred, but it's not like your little Fiat would make you much more notorious either. <laughs> Speaking of notoriety, will there ever be a more badass car than the 1970 El Camino? And of course, I'm talking about the Big Balls, Big Block SS version. Bursting with power and oozing with menace, this ranch vehicle turned Texas Massacre is one of the most beloved and sought after cars in the world, with the value figures climbing into the supercar territories. Sadly, everything that made it so great simply couldn't survive the stranglehold of the oil crisis. And so, after two more generations and a loss of all power, the El Camino was ultimately killed off in the late 80s. But its spirit continued to live on. Down under. This is an HSV Malou, an unhinged in your face sports truck with racing technology and 575 horsepower of utter fury. It's the Australian idea of a construction vehicle made with GM's Go Fast parts. In fact, the whole Holden slash HSV brand is owned by General Motors, so how hard can it be to bring this GM sports truck to a land obsessed with trucks? I mean, how hard can it be? Okay, there are some attempts like this rebadged Pontiac concept, but before they could turn it into reality, the Pontiac brand was killed off. Then there were talks about bringing the Malou under the Chevy's name, but that also amounted to nothing. And now Malou is out of production too, never to return again. Great, just great. Moving on with the most luxurious Volkswagen on sale today, the China only V-Dub. Fideon. While considered to be a success to the failed Phaeton, the Fideon is no match for the insane level of engineering that went into the old car, and that's a good thing. Phaeton was so over-the-top complex and luxurious that it ended up being too good for the badge it carried. No one was going to pay a hundred grand for a Volkswagen, so of course it flopped, and it flopped harder than the Titanic. Now though, they're doing things smarter. Take the elongated Audi A6L, change the body panel so it looks like a Volkswagen, and that's pretty much it. 
suddenly you have a large and luxurious limo slotted between the A6 and the A8, but cheaper than both of those and still profitable. But why China only? The rest of the world doesn't like cars that are a great value? Try telling that to the Koreans. They'll sell you a Hyundai in a luxurious disguise called the Genesis G90, which is like 85% of what you get with the Mercedes S-Class, but for half the price. It's an amazing deal and it sells like crazy. Why wouldn't Volkswagen do the same? I'm sure there are enough people worldwide who would go for a discounted Audi A6L. I know I would. What? It's a great deal. And we can't talk about good deals without mentioning the Cadillac Black Wing. It's the American answer to those super saloons from Germany. And as you might expect, the Mad Cad is bursting with horsepower. 668 to be precise, which if you're keeping score is more than any of its rivals. The top speed goes to the Blackwing too, but the most impressive number is the price. It's just half of what Mercedes is asking for theirs. And that got me thinking. Cadillac never did well in Germany. A few gangster wannabes would buy the Escalades while everything else went completely unnoticed. But if they bring the Blackwing over and unleash it on the unrestricted Autobahn, oh yeah, people will notice for sure. Imagine Gunther here storming down the highway's left lane in his super Merc because he's desperate to take a shit. We've been there, right? The turtle head is already poking out of the shell and all of a sudden there's a Cadillac closing in from behind him, blinking the Morse code. Get out of the way. And I repeat, it's half the price, just half. And you'll be molesting everyone who has a set of four doors. Forget the M5, the GT4, or even the Panamera. Blackwing is the king. It's also the only one with an optional stick shift. And that, my peeps, is how you break into a new market. You beat them at their own game. Also, have you noticed how Honda has become kind of meh? Bunch of good value cars that are smart choice, but nothing to fall in love with, really. The same goes for the sporty models, too. The new docile looking Civic Type R is an emotional step down next to the Gundam Transformer that was the old one. And the return of the long awaited Integra just made everyone lust after the old one even more. This is brilliant, but I like this. There is, however, one Honda that's interesting the cute as a button E. And that's what it's called the Honda E. It has cameras for side mirrors, a large display spanning the entire dashboard that plays aquarium scenes when idle. And how about that panda bear design? Frank Stephenson, one of the most talented car designers ever, gave it a 10 out of 10. The only car that he awarded with such a perfect score. It's amazing. And sadly, it's not coming to America. Honda thinks that we don't like small cars. Okay, I see why they think that. They also think that because E is electric and therefore somewhat expensive, no one in their right mind would go for it. Oh yeah? Remember when BMW brought the new Mini Cooper? A thinking man would see that the Civic was all around better, but many people still bought a Mini because they liked it. Honda should really stop thinking about what makes sense and just give E a chance. Think of all the potential buyers we have here. How many sides does a triangle have? Damn, four. You really think he's gonna go with a smarter choice? Sticking with the Japanese cars, have you heard that the new WRX isn't coming to the UK? Everyone outside of the UK just went, I don't give a shit. Well, I don't think you understand what kind of betrayal this is. It's not just a knife in the back, but a spit in the face too. This rally bred Subaru may be a Japanese car, but remember who made it famous in the first place? It was the fearless Colin McRae, who was a Brit. His legacy was continued by Richard Burns, also a Brit, and the blue monsters that they were piloting were actually developed by ProDrive, a British racing company. The same company was also behind the Subaru WRX TT as well. That's the car which holds the records at arguably the most dangerous race in the world, the Isle of Man time trial. Over the years, Subaru has even honored the British involvement by giving them no less than 20 UK-only special editions, all of which were quickly bought up by a throng of yellow-toothed Subi fans. But now, suddenly, no more WRX for you. What? Why? Subaru blames the low sales, which is the reason why they aren't bringing the BRZ either. Really, the new Toyota GR86, which is the same car as the BRZ, was sold out in 90 minutes after the orders were opened in the UK. You mean to say that not one person would take the BRZ twin instead? Honestly, last time I heard so much bullshit, it came out of Lavrov's mouth. So Subaru, 
enough excuses. Just bring the damn car. And lastly, the biggest head scratcher of all time, selling a manual BMW M5 in North America only. According to Edmunds, over 80% of all cars in Europe are sold with a manual transmission, whereas in the US, the number falls to just 3%. Canada ain't much better either, 9%. The buyer's preferences are clear as day. So knowing that, which of these two markets would be a better fit for a 500 horsepower four-door super beamer with a stick shift? Well, duh. And yet BMW thought North Americans would go crazy for it. They didn't. Only 1,300 manual M5s were sold. Mild shock. I know. In comparison, the automatic version was a god-awful SMG that outsold the stick shift by a ratio of 10 to 1. But BMW wasn't done just yet. Adamant that the manual M5 will sell in the USA, they did the same thing again with the next generation. This time, only 577 buyers ticked that option. What baffles me the most is that this was the last three-pedal Super Beamer, and BMW offered it to people who couldn't care less. I, 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 I'm lost for words. There's truly nothing else to say, so let's just leave it at that. Cut!